Hi, I'm Lisa Ann Walter, and I am a 35-year proud SAG then SAG after member. I'm on the LA local board. I chair a number of committees, including the LA Local Women's Committee. I'm on the Sexual Harassment Committee for the LA Local and the President's National Task Force on Sexual Harassment. I've been an actor most of my life. I've been a professional stage actor since high school. I was a nationally touring headlining comic, which brought me out to LA to create and star in sitcoms. And I did a bunch of movies you might have seen. I've also been a, a talk show host on one of the top 10 stations in the country. I've worked a lot of contracts and I've done a lot of jobs. And in between, I've been a lot of unemployed, just like all the rest of my community, my brothers and sisters in this union. So I very much respect how hard our leadership and negotiating committee work to put this deal together. But there are a few issues that I think make it simply unlivable, an untenable contract. One of those issues is the streaming, which I mentioned. As a producer in this business, I absolutely know that will be the platforms that every all of our content lives on in the very near future. If we are only paid a insufficient amount for the initial job, I'm lucky enough to beat out everybody in my age group to get that one job on Glow. And then I get paid not a lot of money, and I didn't see that increasing. And built into that amount for Netflix, let's say, is 15% of our initial fee is uh, against our residuals. In other streaming platforms, there was no limit to how much they could build into our initial payment and that that counts against residuals. So it could be 90%. It could be all of it. Now, when you're a big time actor, when you're a, a, a name that gets a deal on Amazon or on Netflix and they pay you a whole bunch more money so that they never have to give you another penny, okay, you're already rich, you're already making a gazillion dollars. For the rest of us, working mom of four, all the rest of you, you might not even know that your residual money is built into your initial fee. You're probably paying your representatives on that entire amount. You don't have to. Because that residual, which is buried in the fine print, the residual, you don't have to pay your reps their percentage, but it might look like just a normal fee. So after you shoot this show and it becomes a big hit and you never make another penny and you're looking at your mail going, okay, I'm not making any money this month because I wasn't lucky enough to land five other jobs. I only got that one for that whole six months. And you need that money to not only make your rent, but make your insurance minimums so that you can get insurance that's not not seven or $900 a month under COBRA. You're not getting any more checks. So that's problem number one. So that's my problem with the streaming residual. You can't make a living if you can't support yourself in the lean time in between. Time buys. You run my movie this year, you owe me. You don't run it next year, you owe me nothing. Makes sense. All right, number two. Under 20 minute content, I have 19 year old identical twin boys pretty much all they watch. This under 20 minute content is such a wide description and it could be anything from you're watching gamers on a, pod, or a, a live podcast or something on Twitch. It needs to be covered. They won't be able to make young people in particular who are coming up and creating this content will never be able to make a living or be able to meet their insurance minimums if we have no minimums on under 20 minutes. And how easy would it be for companies who have found a way to make money, much as they're crying, they're all fine. If they shave two minutes off of the 22 minute half hour, half hour shows that we're currently making, that's under 20 minutes. Now nobody makes a living, but they'll continue to make plenty of money, believe me, people that run these platforms. So that's number two. Number three, the sexual harassment protocols, it should be a no-brainer. They should absolutely be protocol already for our union brothers and sisters. Items that Canada already has. They limit essential workers to five to be around Video Village during a, a sensitive scene. They have intimacy coordinators guaranteed. Not okay if the production says it's okay, they can have it. They just have it, which makes it easier for everybody. There's no questions. Directors don't feel weird about what they're asking people to do. The actor is notified 48 hours in advance what they're required to do. <coughs> and by the way, that goes for everybody, including background. Because right now, 
our deal does not have a provision for background to be notified 48 hours in advance. So they go to set and they'll say to you, background lovelies, hey, this scene's now going to require you to be topless. And you could say, well, I don't feel comfortable. And they go, okay, here's your daily pay. Bye. Well, actors don't want to do that. They're afraid they won't work again. They're afraid that they'll be termed difficult. It's, it's not as easy and as cut and dried when you're on a set being asked in the moment by your background coordinator or by your director if you're a principal actor, come on, let, we think it looks better if you just take your top off. We're not even required in this country to have uh, see-through plastic coverings over our areas. They do in Canada. We should at least be commensurate with that. And this is stuff that the PGA said that they wanted to do, that they didn't want to have this issue over their heads as, as a problem, because they know how reasonable it is in what we require of ourselves as a community these days. So speaking of community, I love all the actors I've ever worked with. Every, I've been lucky enough to work with some pretty up there big names. They all understand where they came from, that they came up just like all of us in a cast of players, in a, in a community theater or a barn or whatever. We are here for each other. It is the nature of us to work in community with each other. So I'm saying we just need to look out for each other and protect not just what's my money this month, although, yeah, that's important too, but also what, what is background going to make? What is the, the lowest of working actors going to be able to do in between to meet their insurance minimums? That's my care. That's why I'm here. I love all of you. I support my union and the leaders, and I would like to give them the power to go back and get us a deal that we can all live and work with.